Hi, this is Diana Coulian with RealHealthyRecipes.com. Welcome to my kitchen. Now, today I would like to walk you through a brand new recipe that I made for chocolate chip cookies. My background with cooking and baking started when I was young and honestly, I loved sweets so much that I would spend so much time in the kitchen making cookies. And chocolate chip cookies were absolutely my favorite. And I actually have the chocolate chip cookies that I used to make when I was a kid. And you know, back then, I didn't know anything about nutrition. Everything was for taste and just the fun of baking something and having something sweet to share with others. And so the ingredients that I would use, they're very typical ingredients that you've probably used in your cooking before. Um, this is just traditional chocolate chip cookie ingredients. So we have white, bleached white flour. Now these days, I do not even keep this in my kitchen. We had to make a little uh, trip to the store just so we can have a little demonstration flour here. But you know, by now we know the dangers of grain and the dangers of gluten. So not to mention, I mean, you look at this, you can see it's been bleached. There's not a lot of nutritional value in it, despite all of the issues with the gluten and just, you know, there's so many calories with it being a refined grain. So this is, makes up a good portion of a traditional cookie. And then we have our refined cane sugar. Now, this stuff, I mean, I haven't been eating refined cane sugar for quite some time. And so when I even like smell it, like it's so sweet. So this is another huge piece of what goes together to make traditional cookies. Now from there we have butter, and then we have these semi-sweet chocolate chips. And I did the math on how, much, how many sugar grams is in a bag of these chocolate chips. These are just regular old chocolate chips. And the math came out to 184 grams of sugar. So that is how many grams of sugar we're adding from this bag. And you know, you make a cookie and it's delicious and everybody loves it. And it's just what we know. And so this weekend, I mean, I've come up with plenty of cookie recipes that are healthy in the past, but this weekend I got a little itch to make some cookies. We are going to a party. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make some chocolate chip cookies. And for some reason I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make cookies with quinoa in it. And you know, quinoa is such a great, um, it's actually a seed and it has protein in it. It has fiber. Like it's a lot of usable energy, a lot of nutrients. And one of the things I just love to do is to get these ingredients that are so healthy and so full of nutrition and create something that is really, it tastes better than the traditional version, but it's good for you. So all of the calories, it's all usable energy. Every single thing on this side has nutrition in it. It has minerals and vitamins and the end product tastes so good. So let's walk through the ingredients in my cookie over here. Like I said, for the flour, we're using a cup of cooked quinoa. And then this is um, almond flour. So it's just ground up almonds, two cups. And so two cups of the almond flour plus one cup of the cooked quinoa is what we are using instead of two and a half cups of bleached wheat flour. So this is how we're swapping it out. Now to sweeten, I'm using coconut sugar. Now this is a really wholesome product. It comes from coconut nectar. And what's really cool about it is it tastes sweet. It's less sweet than refined sugar. Like your palate will adjust to it, but it is definitely has a pleasant sweetness, but it's low on the uh, glycemic index. So it's not going to affect your blood sugar the way that traditional sugar does. So it's almost like we get the benefit of something that's sweet that we can you know, add to our cookie, but then we don't have the downside. So now if you wanted to take it one step further and use even less of this wholesome uh, sugar, you can add in some stevia. So take away some of the coconut sugar and add in some stevia if you would like. But it's, I mean, we're making so many of these cookies, this one batch, and I made these ones a little bit big, but one batch is 48 cookies. And so you can afford to put some coconut sugar in it and you know, use portion control. So instead of, Butter, what we're using here is a um, palm shortening and we have some coconut oil. So these are two wholesome sources of fat that we're gonna add to our cookies. And we have some sea salt, some vanilla, one egg, and then um, baking soda. So I'm gonna go ahead and just walk through making this cookie 
and I'm gonna have some taste testers come on and just see how these cookies compare to the traditional, you know, refined cookies. So it's super simple. It's very much like making regular cookies. So we're gonna start by creaming the coconut oil and the palm shortening. So we're gonna start here. And this is one third a cup of palm oil and then a quarter cup of coconut oil. And we are gonna throw this into our mixer. And we're gonna cream it um, on medium for about 30 seconds. So this might get a little loud here. All right, now from here. All right, so we got it nice and creamy. And from here, we're gonna add in our one cup of coconut sugar. And like I said, if you wanna reduce the amount of coconut sugar, um, just based on your taste or based on if you're really trying to control your sugar even more, then feel free to do half a cup and then to add in a little bit of stevia if you'd like. So we're gonna put the, um, the coconut sugar, the baking soda, and it's one teaspoon of baking soda, and then one teaspoon of sea salt. And this recipe is on my website, realhealthyrecipes.com, and we'll put a link here as well so you can get it for yourself. So we're gonna put this um, on high for a couple minutes. This part is very much just like making traditional cookies, literally just using healthier ingredients. So you get all the same fun without you know, the downside. All right, now when you're making your cookies, it's important to wipe down the sides of your bowl just to make sure that we're incorporating all of the sugar in with the oils. We can do that a couple times just to make sure that we have a really even, consistent dough. It's gonna make for better cookies. Now we're gonna beat it until it gets nice and kind of soft, and you're gonna see the color change. When we started, it was a darker color, and now it's getting lighter as the, um, the oil is getting more incorporated into the sugar. All right, so I'm gonna push it down one more time because we wanna make sure it's all incorporated and then from here we're going to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract and i really recommend getting a high quality vanilla extract because you can really taste the flavor difference um, i get an organic kind from sprouts and then we have one egg so we're going to beat this in And once you get comfortable using healthier ingredients, it's really crazy how easy it is to take something that you love, like a cookie, and just make it healthier by swapping out some of these ingredients. So this is, it, you know, it becomes a game. And once you get comfortable with it, it just becomes your new normal. Okay, so we've incorporated the vanilla and the egg into our sugar and our oil here. And it is really, really a great consistency. And now we are gonna add in our flour. So I'm gonna start with the almond flour and I'm just gonna sprinkle about half of it in and then we're gonna go ahead and mix it up. There's no real technique to this. Just gotta get it all in the bowl. And again, as you see it sticking to the sides, we can push it down. You wanna get all that flour mixed in. Oh, and you can start to smell it. All right, so we're gonna push it down. And then we are gonna mix in our cooked quinoa. Now, quinoa is so easy to make. If you haven't made it before, um, what I did to make this is two cups of water in a saucepan, brought it to a boil, and then I added one cup of quinoa and then brought it back to a boil, reduced the heat down all the way to low, um, and then put the, put the lid on it and let it go for about 15 minutes, and then it's done. It's super easy. Typically, in a lot of my recipes, when I make quinoa for a savory dish, I will use chicken broth. It really just gives it more flavor. Now, for cookies, I used water because don't necessarily want a savory flavor added. 
All right, so now we're just gonna throw in the quinoa to incorporate that into the dough. And then we are gonna talk about chocolate, which is one of my favorite topics ever. All right, so we wanna make sure to get the quinoa fully incorporated into the dough. You don't wanna have one cookie with a bunch of quinoa and another cookie with not much. All right, so you can see that this cookie dough looks a lot like your typical cookie dough. And that just means that we've gotten all of our portions right for swapping out all the ingredients. That's some of the fun of, you know, when you're, when you're playing around with trying to change ingredients from the unhealthy stuff to healthy, you're figuring out how much. And if you were paying attention, you know, we had two and a half cups of the bleached flour, but we ended up using three cups of the wholesome flours two of them being the almond flour, and then one being cooked quinoa. So these, you know, this is a recipe that I've tested out and I figured that, okay, this is the consistency that works. This is the amount of wholesome flour to get it to stick together. Um, but you definitely need to play around with it unless you're following a recipe like this. Um, and then when you get one where it's like, oh my gosh, that consistency is just like, you know, regular cookie dough. So that's really satisfying. Okay. so. Sugar, we already talked about how this has 184 grams of sugar in it, which is a ton. Um, and so, if you spent any time making desserts from my blog, you know that I like these Lily's dark chocolate chips, and the reason why is that it's sweetened with stevia. And so there's actually zero grams of sugar in these chocolate chips. So we're gonna add the entire bag into our batter, and we're adding zero grams of sugar. And they taste really good too. It's nice dark chocolate. Okay, so we're gonna mix these in. And I like how these chocolate chips are kind of small. They're petite. They're not quite mini, but it's, it is a really pleasant size for the cookie. You could always, if you have like um, a Lily's chocolate bar, you can chop that up. That's fun to do more of like a chocolate chunk in your cookie. You could also, if you don't want to purchase the stevia sweetened chocolate, you can take unsweetened um, chocolate, like chocolate bars, and then melt it down and add your own stevia. Or you can add a little bit of coconut sugar and then um, put it in the freezer, chop it up and use that as well. So there's a lot of options for, you know, still having a delicious chocolate presence in the cookie but getting away from using traditional chocolate chip cookies or traditional chocolate chips that are just full of sugar. I did take these to a party this weekend and the cookies were gone quite quickly. So I had a lot of people asking me, what's the recipe? So I was, all right, we'll post it this week and uh, make a little video for you. Okay, so you can see I'm using a tablespoon here. Um, as the recipe is written, I made them mini, so I made them with teaspoons. And if you do teaspoons of dough, it's gonna make 48. So if we're doing tablespoon, it's gonna make less than that, 48 divided by three. So it just depends on what size you're going for. This is the size that it will, I guess I should spread them a little bit more. They, they will expand a little bit as they're baking. But I like to flatten it. You don't necessarily have to. I did a batch on the weekend where I just left it like a little scoop and it has a little more texture on the top like a little more bumps I kind of like them to look you know real smooth so it just depends on how much you like to play with cookie dough <laughs> and I like to play with cookie dough so I'm gonna make mine look really pretty yeah so this dough is so soft and so awesome and as far as spacing depending on how big if you're doing you know this tablespoon then I would space it at least an inch or an inch and a half um, and if you're doing teaspoons of dough, you can do it a little bit closer. Yeah, so we, def we posted this recipe, I think yesterday. So if you want to make quinoa cookies, uh, realhealthyrecipes.com, and you too can be experiencing this amazing smell that I'm experiencing and have some fun with it, you know? See if the kids notice that they're different, you know? See if the family, enjoys it and gets on board because, you know, it's just the more we can incorporate some healthy changes in our diet, like it, it adds up, it makes a difference. You know, if that means taking, you know, these unhealthy ingredients completely out of your kitchen 
and replacing them with the more wholesome ones, bless you. <laughs> and, you know, just making that change subtly can add up to a big difference in our diets. All right, I'm going to ask some taste testers to come over here and give these cookies a shot. We have Valentina and Jesse. I'm going to come over. So we have our quinoa cookies. And then I don't know if you want to taste these or if you want to do okay. some side by side comparison. I don't know what these taste like. <laughs> you take another one for the road? <laughs> right. So yeah. I had one of these earlier, and they're delicious. But um, we were snacking. We were snacking. <laughs> it's hard not to. They, they're they're good. But what I like about these is you can actually like feel the crunch mm -hmm. of the quinoa. When yeah. You're chewing. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. get like so many different textures in yeah. your mouth. It's just so good. Yeah. It's really good, and it's so different. It's amazing. Delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, again, realhealthyrecipes.com. We posted the recipe. You know, try it. Share it with your family. You know, give it to your kids. See if it's something that you can start incorporating into your, you know, family traditions and just make your life a little bit healthier and a little more delicious. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.